Hello YouTube, I'm uh, Devin here again, and I have a uh, special video for you. Uh, this video is going to be on two helmets, but they're they're actually just heavily modified versions of the same thing. Uh, what you have before you uh, have before you here is on the left you have an ACVC helmet, and on the right you have a DH132A CVC helmet. Um, and I'll I'll explain all the models and everything in here, but. Um, this one's the older one, and this is the uh, newest version of the CVC helmet. And what the CVC helmet stands for, Combat Vehicle Crewman. And it is a helmet that's designed to be used in combat vehicles, such as tanks and APCs and stuff like that. And a lot of them have integrated communications. These ones I got were uh, pretty beat up. So uh, the one on the right actually didn't come with any uh, communications in it, but I'll explain what they were and everything like that. Uh, when we look at the inside and stuff. And the one on the left did come with a liner, but it was missing a lot of parts, and it was like frayed wires, and it was very dry rotted, and it was garbage, so I, I junked it. I junked the liner out of it, and I'll probably just convert it into like a, a Soha helmet. And I have quite a few of these, actually, and quite a few of these as well. So, but um, we'll get into this now. The combat vehicle helmet, uh, the DH-132, which is this family of helmets, was designed by Gentex in 1973, to replace the T-56 series of helmets that had been kind of used since, like, Korea, post-Korea. Um, before that, tankers used, like, leather football helmets, pretty much, in tanks. So, so this was kind of the first modern helmet uh, to be used by combat vehicle personnel made out of composite materials, really. Um, now, the, D the DH-132 came out, and it was just a very thin composite shell... Um, offering minimal bump protection. It was pretty much, if you bumped your head too hard, you could crack the shell on it. And it was pretty much plastic. Um, it was about as what you would picture an M1 liner, like an M1 helmet liner. And uh, then they came out with the the DH-132-A, uh, which is this, which has a, a little bit thicker shell, as you could tell. It's about twice as thick as an M1 shell. And it's made out of composites, and it provided a little bit... A little bit better protection as far as bump and stuff like that goes. And then uh, they came out with the DH-132B. And the DH-132B was provided to like tank commanders and spotters and stuff. People that had to expose themselves out of the tank. And that was a, an actually thick one. It's like as thick as this one is, which is pretty much twice as thick as this one. And what that was for is it actually was bulletproof. It I was actually pretty much uh, Pazgat with the ears cut off. And uh, they came around kind of in the, the mid-90s, and they used those because the people that ha would have to expose themselves needed that protection from shrapnel as well as, you know, s you know small arms fire and stuff, a lot more than, than this. So, so they, they needed that more protection. So you see the, a combination of uh, 132As and 132Bs used in tanks a lot. And um, this is their replacement, the ACVC, which is uh, made by Specialty Plastics. Uh, if you could see down there, and Specialty Plastics, uh, some of you might recognize that um, name because they made some of the later version M1 liners too, from like the uh, late 70s to the mid 80s. They made a lot of the M1 liners, so this is a well-known company, and um, it has a little bit mm, bit of a mounting difference. Now, these um, had a liner that was held in place by these this one strip of Velcro and uh, these two points up here, all right, these two screws had a rubber edge and one snap in the back. You would, there would be like a little nylon webbing that would come up and you'd snap it on here. And uh, it had two big earphones on either side and it had a boom mic. Now most of these you find will have Bose headsets on them and they're usually pretty rotted out and pretty, pretty gross and disgusting. But, um, so you see a, a lot of them just the shells, or you find, both these are sized large by the way, but you find a lot of these that are just the shells, and uh, these shells actually uh, had a purpose that a lot of people um, forget about. You tend to see them as like CVC helmets, but these were actually like the first like fast helmets that you see special forces using. Uh, they used a lot of like DH-132Bs and DH-132As, um, and because you could throw rails and stuff on them. And other stuff, and it would still provide uh, the DH-132B offered pretty much the same protection, the 3A rating as an as an ACH or a PASGAT, but you could still hear and shit. 
So, and you could throw rails on it and you could drill holes for four point chin strap and made it a lot more stable. And it was just, it was just an all around better option for special forces. So these are essentially the first special forces helmets as well, even though they weren't purpose built for that. A lot of them got converted. Uh, a lot, a lot of early special forces guys you see in the nineties and stuff like that have these essentially they're, they're, uh, combat vehicle helmets converted over to special forces helmets because most of uh, the combat vehicle helmets just had a two-point chin strap so like the Pazgat and it would uh, uh, be under the the earphone right here uh, there'd be like a little hook down here like a snap for like a Pazgat type chin strap just two point but um you didn't really need more than that when you were around in there and um, what it was is uh, the in liner for as far as your, for your head goes would be like it'd be a series of four long foam pads that would run the full length of your head from forehead to nape pretty much and uh, they had little air channels in them and it was in like a big mesh net that you would hold in here the whole cover was mesh and then there would be four foam pads uh running top to bottom uh that's how that one looked in and they changed it up in the don't mind that big ach top pad in there um i'm working on restoring this one and converting it over into like a gunfighter helmet um but they changed a lot of stuff with the acvc and the acvc went to like kind of an ach style pad system it had a big crown pad and it had a brow pad and it had a nape pad but then it was this kind of big spider webbed pad instead of having a crown pad you had this big spider web type pad that would that would sit up here in the top and it would reach all the way down down here and then you would have a smaller crown pad that would go over that spider web and a brow pad and a nape pad that would be for adjustment of your size and stuff and you could get them in different thicknesses and their uh, comm system instead of hanging loose would hang on these would route over these little plastic arms so you could adjust how they would slide in here and stuff like that and they were clipped in the back so that snap now became adjustment for your earphones and stuff like that and uh also to keep you from bumping your face and stuff because they realized when the the gun would recoil and stuff people were, were getting hit in the face not necessarily like directly to the point where it would kill you but just the tank shaking around would cause you to kind of bump your face so they added this face mask on there but other than that it was pretty much the same thing as this except now the liner has a little bit different it's not a big mesh crown pad and the earpieces are all in one the earpieces were separate from the mesh from the from the actual pads so and uh, this fa face mask isn't like steel or anything, it's just plastic to give you bump protection to keep, you, keep your face from bumping into all the steel and hard surfaces inside the tank or the APC. Um, a lot of these are around, you can find these pretty easily. Uh, the DH-132 series there, you can find pretty much all versions around. Uh, the ACVCs are harder to find, especially complete, and especially with all of these plastic parts intact. A lot of these tend to be broken or missing. So I was really glad to find this, even though the liner was junk on it. I can always put a, a liner in it if I really wanted to. I still have parts of the liner. So if I wanted to retrofit like some noise-canceling headphones in there just to make it look nice for display, I probably will do that. I'll, I'll probably retrofit some, some headphones in there and stuff like that. But the liner will be a little different because that foam liner was pretty much so dry-rotted to hell because it wasn't stored properly. So I had to get rid of the liner, but... I don't know if I'll ever find another liner, but I think ACH pads will work just as well in there. So, so. But I figured you guys would want to know something like this. Something about a lesser known helmet, despite how common they are and how long they were used. Because they, the DH-132s have been in service longer than the Pazgat and the ACH combined. So, this helmet's one of the U.S.'s first composite helmets, 1973. You know, whereas you see the... Uh, Pazgat come out in 1985, so this is this is over 10 years older than the Pazgat, uh, the first DH-132s are, and so it's it's not not a lot is known about them unless you were a tanker or an armored personnel carrier or a driver of some sort in combat. You don't really know that these exist, so I figured I'd do a video on them and uh, hopefully get some information out there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't know a ton of history between all the models. And different versions of this helmet because there's ones that a lot of these helmets were contracted out to different manufacturers a lot of the parts come from different manufacturers there's there's like seven different headset manufacturers that I know of all by myself 
Um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot of different stuff that we could get into if I really wanted to sit down and do the research, but I figured this would be a good overview video. And if you want, I'll go into each one of these helmets more in depth if you guys want to see a video on that. Or if you want to see any closer closer pictures or anything, you could ask and I'll, I'll try to get you some pictures if you want to see anything specific on it. Um, but till then, uh, please leave a comment if you want to continue on with the subject or just to show appreciation or if you want to see any different kinds of helmets or any different kinds of videos in general. Uh, suggest subjects and topics for future videos. Um, if you have any helmets that you want to identify, uh, feel free to uh, get a hold of me and I'll try to help you as best I can to identify what helmet you have or where it came from or anything like that. I'm pretty good at tracking down a lot of the information for that if I don't already know it. Um, so uh, please also uh, spread the word about the channel. We're at like eight subscribers, which is which is great. I, lo I love you guys so much. Uh, you you comment on videos a lot, and I, I really like I really like that. I like feeling the support and stuff like that. And uh, but I'd like to get some of this information out there for more people. It doesn't it doesn't help me if it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so please spread the word about the channel. Feel free to give me a shout out. And if you do give me a shout out, tell me what. Tell me what video you do. Post a link to the video. I would I would love to go watch the channel and support your channel as well. Uh, I give shoutouts as as well too. If there's anything specific you want to see, I'll usually do a shoutout to the person that requested that helmet, or or type of thing. So uh, until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.